Hello there! In this lesson, we'll be creating a rhinoceros and bedazzling her with pineapples. It's a cute concept and a lot of fun, so let's get into it. Start by printing out the PDF lesson plan. You can find this through the link above. Use the last image, which is the outline, and transfer it onto a canvas with a HB pencil. I'm going to use a 60 by 121 centimeter canvas, but you can try any size or shape you like. Now we're going to build up the edges of our rhino with modeling paste. I'm using a number 10 palette knife to apply the paste because I can smooth the coat easily and use the edge of the knife to cut back the modeling paste. This will create a really sharp edge. Modeling paste is a fantastic medium. It's an easy way to create sculptural form and throw a heap of texture into your work. You might have noticed that rhinos have thick skin that's really wrinkly around their eyes. We're going to suggest these wrinkles by laying modelling paste on with the tip of a palette knife following our pencil lines. All this work will draw attention to the rhino's eye, which is an important area in most paintings. I'm going to apply my underpainting base coat with an abstract expression brush. It's an ideal brush to use with dimension acrylic paint as the bristles are quite firm, allowing you to distribute the thick paint evenly over the canvas. I've created the background colour from burnt umber and yellow ochre but you could try experimenting with whatever colour you like. Now it's time to start painting the rhino. For this project, we're using Payne's Grey, Titanium White and a touch of Yellow Ochre. You'll notice I haven't mixed the colours on the palette. That's because I want irregularity on the coat. I've mixed them roughly on the canvas instead. This makes it more interesting to look at. Darken and lighten areas you want to by blending in darker or lighter tones. The head is an important area, so we're going to make it quite light to draw attention to it. Make sure you bear in mind the direction of where your light is coming from. For this project, it's coming from the top right. Use a smaller brush for any light areas and keep working around the rhino until all the body is covered. Then add darker tone into the underside of the head, the belly and the underside of the horns. We can then add the darkest tones into the folds of skin around the shoulder and under the belly. Because our base coat is dry, we can really scrub the paint onto the surface. This is called scumbling. You only need a little bit of paint on your brush and away you go. Darken the nostril area, the beak, the ears and around the eyes. Follow the same process now but with a very light tone on areas you want to highlight. Concentrate on the top of the rhino and any areas that would catch the light. This is a simple but effective way to suggest form. The final step on our rhino is to lay some pure Payne's Grey into the eye area. In the next stage, we'll be bedazzling our rhino with a pineapple motif. But if you want, you can leave the rhino at this stage, and that's cool too. We've got a lot of pineapples to get through on our rhino, so we're going to stylize or simplify them. We'll make the pineapples on the legs a little smaller. First, lay the leaves in a simple star shape, starting each leaf from a central point. You can suggest the textured pineapple skin with thick dabs of paint. The colours I'm using are outlined in the PDF, but you can use whatever colours you want, in whatever pattern you want. Just have some fun with it.
our rhino is fully bedazzled, we're going to scrub some gold paint into the background to lift it. Don't put too much paint on your brush. You want to scrub it in well so you really get some texture. Well, we hope you enjoyed this quirky lesson. It's been a lot of fun and I think our rhino painting would look great in any lounge room. If you've got a different idea for this type of painting, give it a go. We'd love to see and hear about it.